From Washington, D.C., this is Middle East Focus with Paul Salem. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Middle East Focus. I'm Jerry Firestein, Director of Gulf Affairs and Government Relations at the Middle East Institute, sitting in for Paul Salem. In a region beset with conflict, both hot and cold, Oman stands out as a country determined to maintain positive relations with its neighbors and around the world. This record of balanced relationships has made Oman a valued intermediary in foreign relations, including serving as a key facilitator of U.S.-Iranian contacts that led to the Iran nuclear deal. But Oman's activism on the world stage has not come without controversy. Oman was one of the first Arab countries to establish quasi-diplomatic relations with Israel, and its tradition of friendly relations with Iran continues to raise eyebrows with its GCC neighbors. Today, Oman finds itself balancing its interests and relations in two of the most difficult arenas of Gulf conflict, promoting dialogue to bring an end to the three-year-old civil war in Yemen and advocating for solutions to the intra-GCC dispute between Qatar and the quartet states of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt. Can Oman maintain its balance and successfully serve as mediator and facilitator even as the war and humanitarian crisis in Yemen worsens and the rift with Qatar drags on? Here to discuss these questions with me today, we are honored to welcome Syed Badr bin Hamad al Saidi, Secretary General of Oman's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Syed Badr has served in senior capacities at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1988. His extensive experience encapsulates Oman's role as a leader in tackling these and other issues. Syed Badr, welcome to Middle East Focus. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Syed Badr, you uh, were speaking to uh, a, an audience here at the Middle East Institute and uh, talked a lot about as a theme, love thy neighbor, the importance of maintaining dialogue, uh, the importance of trying to work through differences and difficulties through a process of negotiation. Today in the region, that doesn't seem to be the theme that is moving people. Could you give us your sense uh, from uh, Oman's perspective of where we are right now and how we might move forward to try to address some of the vital issues that are confronting uh, the region? There are challenging times. The whole world is going through, and in particular, the Middle East region. And uh, while we understand some aspects of why this is happening and respect the positions undertaken by some of our brothers and neighbors. Uh, nevertheless, we really do believe that since we all share the same region and indeed we share the same planet, nothing could be more powerful in our favor than the power of dialogue. The power of a dialogue between everybody can really take us a long way in mitigating and resolving some of these complex issues. We are in the 21st century and we need to really approach these difficulties and challenges with an eye to the future, not the past. We need to look at the future and where we want to be in 10, 20, 20, 30, 40 years from now for our children and our grandchildren. And indeed, I think every parent will agree with me. We want to be at peace. We want to be at harmony with each other, cooperate for the betterment of our life, of our well-being, for humanity as a whole. One of the central challenges in the region today is what's widely perceived as the conflict between the the uh, the competition between Iran and Saudi Arabia for dominance in the region. Oman has long played a critical role as 
as you might say, the Iran whisperer, as the, the country that has an ability to speak to the leadership in Tehran, to understand and in some ways interpret uh, what uh, the Iranians are thinking for the rest of the region. When you think about the Iran-Saudi competition, what would be your thinking in terms of how we can promote some kind of a dialogue, get the two sides to uh, talk once again? Well, we are hopeful that all these very important regional players can, at the end of the day, reach some kind of an understanding that will convert, if we can call this competition, convert it into a more constructive role that will help the whole region, that will bring everybody on a win-win outcome rather than a zero-sum outcome. And I think that will require a great deal of engagement and dialogue. And I hope in the long term, wisdom will prevail uh, and uh, some kind of an understanding can be formed and reached. And we all can respect uh, everybody's role that is part of the same region. In your comments to the audience at the Middle East Institute, you had remarked that there was a sense uh, that Iran was open to uh, a dialogue, open to reintegration, maybe going all the way back to the first Gulf War uh, and the uh, and the relatively mild role that Iran played at that point. But again, after the JCPOA was concluded, uh, that uh, perhaps there was a, a window of opportunity for Iran uh, to reintegrate into the broader international community. Is it your sense that the Iranians are still looking for uh, a window of opportunity? Are they still uh, uh, positive about re-engagement with the international community? I don't believe there is any country nowadays in this world who wants to be isolated or who wants to be excluded. I think uh, there will always be an opportunity for dialogue and engagement and re-engagement if the will is there. We need to have the will in place and uh, a certain amount of confidence. And I think the JCPOA provides a good starting point to build that confidence and to allow for a broader dialogue to take place and engagement that will bring everybody around the table in, a, in the most constructive way. One area that uh, perhaps uh, might offer the, the greatest scope for a dialogue, particularly if you want to reduce tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran, is also an issue that's very close to Oman's own security calculation, and that is Yemen and the civil war there. Uh, Oman has played a positive role in the past. It uh, has hosted uh, some of the discussions. It certainly helped facilitate, for example, Secretary Kerry's uh, uh, engagement with the uh, with the Houthis before he left office uh, at the end of 2016, um, and uh, we have seen in in recent uh, weeks after the appointment of the new UN Special Envoy Martin Griffiths that Oman has once again been <coughs> engaging with uh, the Houthis, perhaps. Uh, helping to advise them on uh, negotiating strategies or other ideas. Are you optimistic at this point that we can get a, uh, a political dialogue going again among the Yemenis that might allow for the end of this terrible civil war? Well, I think I would like to have hope that there will be a solution found that is good for everybody, uh, good for the Yemenis, and good for the neighbors of Yemen. After all, we really want to see a united Yemen that is stable and that is prosperous and that is at peace, not just with itself, but also with its neighbors. This is, I think, the common objectives of all of us in the region. And this is what I hope Martin Griffiths will be working upon. The challenge now is really 
after three years of conflict, of war and bloodshed, and so many innocent people uh, have lost their lives in this conflict, and so many destruction took place, that wisdom will prevail in the concept of dialogue and a peaceful resolution of this conflict. And the United Nations here has a very, very important and central responsibility to play in the office of Martin Griffiths. And what role do you see for the United States in that? Uh, do, you, do you think that the U.S. should be playing a more active role in trying to promote the uh, political dialogue? The United States is a friend and will remain a friend for the whole region. We respect the role the United States can play, a constructive role um, in lending also their own advice to their friends of what could be the best way possible out of some of these difficult uh, challenges. And I really hope that uh, the administration will double its efforts uh, in tandem with the United Nations, in tandem with the regional players, so we can all put a new, fresh momentum that will produce the intended results. One other area, and of course, uh, uh, Mike Pompeo decided uh, that he was going to spend his first weekend as Secretary of State in, uh, in the region. Uh, visiting uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, as well as uh, several other states uh, in, in the broader Middle East. He uh, was reported to have raised the Qatar uh, issue uh, in his discussions with the Saudi leadership uh, and to have reiterated that the U.S. would like to see an effort on the part of the so-called quartet states uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt in resolving the uh, the dispute with Qatar and uh, and promoting a return to stronger GCC unity, uh, particularly at a time where there's uh, uh, so much tension uh, in the area. What is the role that Oman is playing in trying to bring the parties together? Uh, to resolve the Qatar dispute? We have continuously supported the role of Kuwait in uh, mediating uh, a solution for this crisis, and we continue to do so. But we also, at the same time, welcome uh, the U.S. administration's current efforts to help in this regard. And we really, like the United States, hope to see a resolution of this, uh, the sooner the better, because the sooner we bring an end to this dispute, the better it is for the GCC uh, as an organization. Uh, and so I, we would continue, Oman would continue to support any efforts to bring this dispute uh, to an end. There had been a suggestion that the United States was going to host a summit uh, of the GCC leadership. Um, initially, the idea was that it might be as early as uh, May. Uh, now that seems to have been uh, delayed a little bit, but there's, <laughs> there's still some uh, discussion about possibly in September. Is this something that you believe would help contribute to a resolution of the, uh, of the conflict with Qatar? We have conveyed our acceptance of the invitation, and we welcome that invitation for the summit. And uh, no doubt, if it does uh, take place, uh, we will participate in it. I think, and I believe, yes, such an effort will be helpful in bringing... Um, an end to this conflict. Let's hope that we will bring an end to it before even the summit takes place. That would be good. Um, let me uh, turn to another issue uh, of current concern in the region, and that is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, Oman uh, was an Arab state that had a dialogue with Israel at a time before it became stylish to have one. And so... Uh, the question would be, uh, one, whether you are still engaged in that dialogue and what um, are you uh, telling the Israelis these days? 
and also uh, in the uh, in the aftermath of the U.S. decision to uh, to recognize Jerusalem as uh, the capital of Israel. How do you see that process going forward? Well, again, we like to look to the future uh, when it comes to this particular issue. And I think if we think with the mindset of the future, uh, we would want to see a process taking place that can bring an end to the Israeli-Palestinian issue and uh, to see a new Palestinian state that is established, that lives at peace side by side with Israel. This will require a strong role by the United States. And I hope just as much as the presidents took that bold decision about Jerusalem, they will be also equally a bold decision about pushing forward the process of peace between Palestine and Israel. We will continue to support any efforts in this regard that will bring an end to this historic conflict and normalize eventually uh, the relationships between Israel and its neighbors. On a related issue, let me uh, ask you about something that's near and dear to your heart, and that is Uh, that Oman is the host of the last remaining multilateral initiative uh, from the uh, Oslo uh, peace process, which is the Water Working Group uh, that uh, brings together a number of Arab states with the Israelis, addressing uh, one of, if not the most critical resource issue confronting the region and one that our own military and CIA uh, consider to be a potential flashpoint for future conflict in the region. Where are we on the water uh, working group these days? And and is it uh, continuing to make a contribution to addressing this uh, really very important issue? Absolutely. The Middle East Desalination Research Center continues to operate. It was established back in the 1990s in Muscat and uh, meetings do take place between all its members, that includes Israel, uh, to discuss the issues of water scarcity and how all of us, the nine or ten members of the center, can help bring better technologies to address this issue that can allow countries to desalinate water from the ocean uh, on an economic basis. We have gone quite a long way since the establishment of this center. And uh, we now conduct uh, intensive training and capacity buildings and practical and basic research on site uh, with the pilot plants uh, operating. And it is continuing to contribute uh, towards the realization of this human goal that we all share. Well, and I think, again, a reflection of the of the constructive role that Oman plays in trying to address some of the, uh, the real challenges confronting the region, even in areas that don't necessarily make the front page of the uh, local newspaper. But uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Asayad Bader. Uh, for your uh, for your presence here, for your willingness to to join us today, uh, and to share with uh, with us uh, and our listeners uh, some of your own ideas and and the uh, the roles that uh, that the Sultanate of Oman is playing on uh, these major challenges. Thank you again for joining us today, and thank you to our listeners for tuning in. This has been a presentation of the Middle East Institute. To support MEI's programs and podcasts, please donate at www.mei.edu. Thank you for your support.